People often ask me, uh, usually when they think that I'm being paid to do my hobby, which to some extent is true, what's new in ancient Rome? Don't we know all this stuff already? And there's a sense in which a lot of the material that I work with, any Roman historian works with, is very well known and very old. That we have documents. Very, it's rare nowadays to find new histories, new historical sources, new documents in the way that a historian of, of, of the 20th century, the 21st century, even the 17th, 18th, 19th century can still find archives and material no one's discovered. So we don't do that very much. It can be done some places, but it's quite rare. In the sands of Egypt, um, in the Black, in the Dead Sea, uh, there are these archives which occasionally turn up. By and large, the political history of the Roman Empire is so well known, it's very unlikely to be changed, anything other than details, as time goes on. But there's a huge set of other information. There's archaeological evidence, which has enormously changed our understanding of the way things work. Take shipwrecks. Hundreds and hundreds of shipwrecks excavated by divers. The one of the reasons you excavate a shipwreck is because it's a time capsule. It takes a cargo of stuff that is all there at the same moment and just drops it out well, drops it down, in fact, onto the bottom of the, of the Mediterranean. And from this, you can see by looking at the cargoes, where the things were made, where they were going, how they were being exported, and you can piece together the workings of an enormous economy. And you can see over time, you've got enough shipwrecks, you can plot them on a graph, you can see the rise of an economy and the collapse of an economy. So different bits of the Roman Empire get connected. You can ask which bits are about trade, which bits are about the growth of cities, which bits are about taxation. Or, um, if you want some even harder science, there's the evidence that's just come up in, just in the last few decades, really, from cores dug through the ice cap in Greenland. Now, Greenland might not seem to be the best place to investigate the Roman Empire, but one of the things these ice cores do is they record year by year a record of the number of pollutants in the atmosphere. Now, if you look at the relevant bits of the ice core for the late 19th through 20th century, you won't be surprised to hear there are enormous amounts of heavy metals. This is the Industrial Revolution. Suddenly the world gets polluted. It's still being polluted. But what's more interesting for us, perhaps, if you go back past all those clean centuries of the early modern period, even the clean Middle Ages, you suddenly get to another spike, another spike of heavy metal pollution, and that's the Roman Empire. So something completely new is we've discovered that not only does the Roman have an economy that trades in staple goods, in grain, in wine, in olive oil, in meat, all these sort of things. But it's also trading and producing huge amounts of iron and other, other, and other, other metals as well.